Hello pandas, I'm here with a pretty specific guide that some of you may not know you needed. What to do with lead wheel weights. Trust me, you're gonna wanna see this. Now, lead is normally a pretty good material to scrap. Every scrapper loves lead batteries. What you may not realize is what a great opportunity lead wheel weights can be. Let me demonstrate. This is a bucket of mixed wheel weights. I bought it from a tire shop for 10 bucks. They'll normally weigh between 130 and 150 pounds. Now, my yard will pay me 21 cents a pound for that the way it is, and it doesn't matter if I separate out the steel and zinc wheel weights that are in there because those are calculated into that price. And it's the same price that I'll get for a hand-picked bucket of just the lead ones because of this steel clip here. That'll still make it dirty. I could take this bucket in the way it is and get 30 bucks. Not that that's a big number, but if you like money, then you should recognize the significance of a 300% return on your investment with a turnover that same afternoon. Now, before you leap out of your chairs to capitalize on this absolute gold mine, allow me to temper your excitement a little because this does suffer from scaling problems. And then we'll get to the real fun. First off, they can be difficult to acquire at all. All of the big tire shops will have contracts with their suppliers that include scrap recovery. And if you do find a smaller one that's willing to sell them to you for cash, well, they only produce them at a slow yet steady rate. And then, even if you could drive around town picking up as much as you could carry, that might not actually be that much. See, at 150 pounds a piece, that's right on the line of what an average human can lift, and you could seriously injure yourself doing that. If you are able to manage it, you'll have to take your vehicle's limitations into account. Too many of these in the back, you'll be replacing bearings, struts, tires, all sorts of stuff. And finally, 10 bucks was a heck of a bargain for a bucket. You're more likely to spend 20. So, if you can't realistically load your car up with 10 of these and triple your money five days a week, well, you might as well maximize your profit on what you are able to grab. You're gonna like this. With a pretty simple setup, we can melt these down and pour them into clean lead ingots. Just a camp stove, stainless steel pot, and a bottle of propane. It should be done outside, but the cold weather will make it take a lot longer, so we're just gonna crack the door open a little and keep a fan going. Lead is toxic, so the gloves and goggles are a must, or at least a splatter shield, as is one of these particulate filter masks. Lead fumes aren't really likely, it's the lead dust we're trying to protect ourselves from. We'll start with a bunch in the pot, and once the lead melts down, the rest of the steel and zinc and whatever else will float to the top, we'll skim it off, and we'll add some more from the bucket. Rinse and repeat. Once we've got a pot of molten lead, we'll want to flux it before pouring it. You can use borax, sawdust, or candle wax. Fluxing means adding carbon to the melt, which adds value by releasing dirt and carbon, which collects together at the top where it can be skimmed off. Now all that's left is the pour. Don't lift a pot of molten lead. It's heavier than you think, and the handles could fail, which would be bad. Resist the urge to pour water on them until they're completely set. If you introduce water or ice while the metal's liquid, you risk splattering molten metal everywhere. Now this is actually the first time I've ever done this with lead, so huge thanks to my friend who gave me not only a ton of tips, but loaned me most of the equipment. Um, and without him, I may not have been able to put this together for you guys. Now, that said, I feel like there'd be some value in sharing my first impressions. One of the most surprising things was how long it ended up taking. It's actually the next day now, because I went all night at it until I was finished. And when I do it again, I'll probably use a bigger pot, but the biggest thing that would change that would be not doing it at a cold time of year. In fact, if I was doing it in the middle of the day, it wouldn't have been that bad. But the wind really picked up last night, so there was a, a cold wind blowing in from the, the crack in the door, and with the fan blowing cold air across it, it kept bringing the temperature down all the time. And I probably would have gotten through that bucket twice as fast if not for that. Bit of a counterpoint to that, though, it used 
very little propane. I was running that stove for hours and hours. I weighed the bottle before and after. Three and a half pounds total. It's not much, and like I said, if it was warmer, it'd be even less. I'd like to point out, though, that the whole process is very dirty. Those buckets of wheel weights are full of dirt and dust. Not only that, when actually melting them down, there's a lot of glue and stickers and plastic and stuff that ends up melting and making a pretty gross smell. We're not actually getting anywhere near the boiling point of lead, so I'm not worried about lead fumes, but I was still glad to have the protective equipment. Actually, it was surprisingly easy not to screw up. I was a bit worried about melting a bunch of the zinc weights in there accidentally, but the melting temperatures are so far apart, it kind of makes me rethink what I was saying about how easy it is to melt uh, zinc alloy at home. I'm sure you still could, but you'd have to work harder to get up to temperature. I hope anybody who watches that video then follows it up with watching this one. Other than that though, I just gotta say it was pretty fun and I'm definitely doing it again. The density of the liquid is so great and yet it's also got a huge amount of surface tension. So when you stir it, you can see it swirling around, but the everything on the top is perfectly still. All the contaminants and little like shapes of oxidation and what, it was, it was weird and it was cool and I liked it. Um, but if anybody's going to try it, I, it is toxic. It's really important you protect yourself. Now, shall we see how we did? Well, from a 130 pound bucket, we got 56 pounds of lead ingots. Oh, and that frosting effect on the outside, it's fine. It doesn't indicate contamination. It just has to do with the rate at which it cooled. My yard buys those at 61 cents a pound. So they're now worth 34.16. Plus this bucket of skimmings isn't garbage either. That's irony zinc. So if we get 21 cents a pound for that, well, that's almost $17. But we're not gonna sell these to a scrapyard. No. These are worth much more than that. They're not technically soft lead anyways. They're an alloy, which includes a small percentage of antimony to harden it, and a small percentage of tin, which lowers the melting temperature, prevents oxidization, and helps it flow and fill molds better. Except the stick-on weights. Those actually are soft lead because they don't have any antimony in them. We could have melted them separately and made soft lead bars as well, but nah. No, we're going to sell these privately to bullet casters, most likely, and possibly fisher folk or anybody else who wants to make weights. See, lead is an important material for those applications, but since we don't use it in everything like we used to, it's getting more difficult to find. You can buy casting lead in nicely measured alloys from online suppliers. They cost about $5 a pound, but the shipping on top of that really marks up the price because the mass is so great. No, we can pretty reliably get $2 a pound selling these locally. So that means we spent an evening and $3 in propane turning $10 into $112. Now that's the kind of return I'm talking about. And that's just the fast nickel we're talking about. If you're more of a slow dime sort, then you'll be interested to know that the Bella Dune smelting plant in New Brunswick closed in 2019, leaving only two primary lead producers in North America, and the secondary lead producers will only last as long as our reliance on antiquated lead acid car batteries does. Back to the task at hand. If you're all set up to cast some ingots, you can add some value to your bullet casting customers by grabbing some pewter whenever you come across it. Maybe some thrift stores or something. They'll have mugs and candle holders and uh, picture frames made out of the stuff, and it's usually stamped. See, this lead is a bit too hard to fill a small mold like a bullet, so a caster will need to add some tin to it to soften it up. Pewter is 91% tin, 7.5% antimony, and 1.5% copper. The older stuff had some lead in it too. But tin is much more valuable, about 15 bucks a pound to a caster. So if you've got a customer picking up a box of lead, They'll probably need a few pounds of pewter to go with it. So there's a couple tips to help you make more money with lead wheel weights. If you enjoyed this video or just want to be a pal, then slap a like on it or share some stories in the comments. I wouldn't ask if it wasn't important, it really does help. Subscribe for more scrap metal tips, tricks, and guides. Leave it better than you found it, and keep doing the thing.